Thank you, Jefferson. Hi, everybody. This is Stephanie Walter, Director, Exhibition Operations at the Water Environment Federation. And we do really appreciate you taking a little while out of your day to attend today's webinar, How Small Exhibitors Can Get Their Fair Share at West Tech. Jefferson Davis is primarily presenting today, but I will obviously have a little bit of time as well. Um, as always, spend a little bit of time at the Exhibitor Toolkit, at the Exhibitor Success Resource Center, as well as the other pages on the toolkit. The Resource Center has a lot of tools and documents and downloads for you, as well as our prior webinar, the New Exhibitor Web Briefing, which really tackles some of the nuts and bolts of exhibiting, whereas this webinar is really more dedicated to a lot of marketing. Um, and ways to be seen. And with that, I think we're going to go ahead and get started, and I'm going to hand it back over to Jefferson Davis. All right, Stephanie, thank you again, and thanks to everybody for being here. You know, it's really great for all of us, especially exhibitors, to be partnered with a great organization like WEF who cares enough about you as exhibitors to not just rent you concrete and kind of hope it works out for you but they really view their relationship with you as a long-term partnership with the goal of helping you grow your businesses through WEFTEC and all of the other resources that WEF has available to you. I've been really honored and privileged to be around WEFTEC for, I've lost track of the number of years, it's at least eight or nine. It's been so amazing to watch the growth of the show and the exhibitors get better and better every year as a result of a lot of the programs we're doing. Resource Center. I hope you will visit there frequently. I hope you'll download and use everything. Honestly, there's about $20,000 of free trade show productivity tools, planning exercises, articles, webinars. And at any time, you have access to me and a team of 10 trade show experts for free who You have the ability to ask questions at any time, and we respond lightning fast. So thanks for being here, and thanks for partnering with us, and be sure to take advantage. Um, if you've seen or heard me around, you know my wheelhouse is trade shows. You know, I've been at it 30 years. Um, I, I've really been on the hunt for what are the 20% of activities that generate 80% of the results. And uh, to that end, I think now, having generated with my own company and the clients that I've worked with where we've done tracking, we've been able to trace combined now over $800 million in results from shows. And so one thing I know for sure, trade shows work, but you've got to do the right things at the right time frames. And we're really speaking today to our smaller exhibitors, those of you that are in inline. 10 by 10, 10 by 20, 10 by 30. Uh, maybe you're in a small 20 by 20 opinion style, or maybe you're a big exhibitor who logged on, because some of these ideas really apply to anybody of any size. But we understand that as a smaller exhibitor, um, in a big show like WEFTEC, um, that it can be challenging. So what we're trying to do is show up ahead of the cycle and get you focused on the things that you need to do as a smaller exhibitor to win this game. So as a small exhibit, you know, and by the way, I come from the world of smaller exhibitors in terms of me exhibiting at shows. I never had the big budget. And honestly, in the early days, I felt a little disadvantaged. You know, I'm out here in a 10 by 10, a 10 by 20, you know, and I'm looking at these people in these 40 by 40, 50 by 50s, and I didn't have the kind of money to throw at that, you know. but one of my mentors early said something that really touched me. He said, if you can't make money with a little bit of money, you won't make it with a lot of money. I didn't really get it when he said that. 25, 30 years later now, I get it. It's not a function of how much money you throw at a trade show that's going to determine whether you win it. There's so many other factors that go in. So as a small, small exhibitor, don't worry about that, right? Because you can't outspend them, right? But you can outsmart them. 
You know, as a small exhibitor, you have the ability to be a lot quick on your feet, nimble. Uh, the ability to maybe do things that larger exhibitors uh, would have to go through bureaucracies to get to. If you're the owner of your company or a partner in your company and something makes sense to you, you can adapt and apply right now. And so you can outsmart them. And having worked with a lot of exhibitors, both uh, small and a lot of big ones, um, there's a lot of chances for you to win this game. One of the ideas that a smaller exhibitor can take advantage of is not feeling like it's a David versus Goliath thing, not feel like it's your individual company against your big competitors. As a small exhibitor, I've seen this work a lot, the ability to identify, I call them upstream and downstream exhibitors. This would mean an exhibitor who has a product or service that when somebody buys or uses it, makes you the next logical consideration. So you would be downstream. Upstream, when you're upstream, there are companies that when someone buys your product or service, that makes them the next logical consideration. So you might want to ask yourself, you know, look at where you fall into the, you know, the water food chain. Who's upstream from me? Who's downstream? And reach out to them. And I've seen companies come together and leverage their promotional budgets and put together events that can compete with the big exhibitors. You know, for example, I was doing work in the dental industry. And in Canada, um, we had about seven companies come together, small exhibitors. And they pulled their resources and they did two things. They um, had a Jeep Cherokee and they brought it to the show, put it in one of the booths, and you had to visit all seven booths to enter into the contest to win. So they essentially kind of organized their own like treasure map, if you will. Because all of the companies were upstream and downstream, they were all connected, everybody won as traffic went around each small exhibitor's booth. Another show worked with some companies, several companies who again were upstream, downstream, and they pulled their promotional resources together and they hosted, you know, they got the hottest restaurant bar in the town and they blocked it off and they invited all of their customers collaboratively and all of the prospects that were in their funnel and they looked and felt like a large player. So here's maybe the big idea from this message. Don't feel like you have to go it alone. Sometimes partnering up with um, complementary but not competitive companies can give you a real big edge. So I kind of mentioned this earlier, but usually as a smaller exhibitor, you know, there are government, there's OSHA, there's federal regulations, um, there's guidelines, but usually you're not as restricted by rigid corporate branding guidelines. You'd be amazed at how many exhibits we've evaluated that are not executing very well. And when we talk to the marketing managers, they tell us, well, it's our corporate branding guidelines that are forcing this. Well, a lot of times what works out in mainstream media doesn't work so well on the exhibit floor. So you can be a lot more flexible and a lot more creative in your exhibits and how you execute. And that can be a big advantage, right? Um, here's a big idea here, which I, is going to make your life so much easier. You know, if you're in a 10 by 10 or a 10 by 20 booth, it doesn't take that many visitors for you to win the game. If you're in a 50 by 50, 100 by 100 booth, it takes a lot of visitors, right? But that's not the case for you if you're a smaller exhibitor. In fact, we're going to have you calculate in a moment your exhibit interaction capacity. But you, you know, you don't need to see everybody to win this game. You can't see everybody, right? And finally, when you really get down to the heart of the matter, right, attendees really want the same thing from visiting a booth, whether it's a 10 by 10, a 40 by 40, or a 100 by 100. So my first message to you as a small exhibitor in a big show like WefTech competing with some really large exhibits don't worry about it, right? If you'll look at it from this perspective and use and apply all of the resources that are available to you through the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center, you can win this game. 
and that's what we're talking about here is helping you cross that goal line and score that winning touchdown. That's what we're working on. So let's talk money here. That's, you know, because again, you don't have that big budget, right? And every dollar, see, I came from the world where every dollar had to do the work of 10. I never had like a hundred thousand dollar, a quarter of a million dollar, a million dollar budget, right? And, you know, and back to the idea, if you can't make money with a little bit, you probably won't make it with a lot, you know? So the budgeting rule of thumb, the generally accepted practice is to take your floor space cost and multiply it by three. So if your booth space cost is, let's say, $4,000, then you're going to set a budget of at least $12,000 as a starting point. I'm going to recommend you break that rule and go floor space times five. Floor space times five, right? Now, I'm going to tell you in a moment the three areas of the spend that are the leverage points. but I want you to think about, you may flinch at that first. You're asking me to invest more in the show? Well, yeah. Here's why. I want you to step back and think about what is the revenue value of one single customer to your company. And then I want you to contrast that with the amount of money that you're currently you're thinking about investing in the show. And I want you to think about how many customers does it take you to get get 100% payback on your investment. I would be willing to bet that for most of you listening to today's webinar, it's one to two. It might only be one. So don't be afraid to invest a little bit more. Number three, when it comes to money, right? Um, I read a great book called The Richest Man in Babylon. It's essentially a parable, and it had a lot of lessons about money. And one of the lessons was Keep strict accounts. Know where your dollar is going, right? So it's very important as an exhibitor that you track your spending carefully. To help you do that, we've created a really killer cost control tool on the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center that has the exhibit broken down into nine major spend areas. It's pre-built. Plug in your numbers. It'll automatically build a, a chart that will contrast where your dollar is currently going by area with the latest research on where the dollar is going for the average exhibitor. So make sure to use that. And then begin to look around, of course, you know, just because you've allocated more money, you know, you're not just going to throw it up in the air or throw it on the floor. So you're still going to want to look around and figure out, you know, where can I save a little bit of money here? And Stephanie, uh, tell us a little bit about, um, Stephanie really knows the ins and outs of some of the logistical operational and something that you'll hear a lot in a lot if you go to Exhibitor Show, you read Exhibitor Magazine, is that you'll hear, ship your stuff to the hotel versus the convention center. Stephanie, what are your thoughts on that? So just a couple of, I, just a couple of thoughts on shipping to the hotel versus the convention center. Many hotels can charge you receiving by the box and will also charge storage fees. So if you are going to do that, confirm those fees and the, both the by the box and storage fees beforehand just to see if that is true and compare them to the quotes for material handling and see how those two things stack up and see if that is in fact a money saver. And then the other thing to keep in mind with respect to that is what your setup and dismantle allowances are. What are you allowed to carry into the convention center and by what means? And those two things will let you know if that in fact is a money saver or if you are in fact allowed to carry things through the door and where. Yeah, um, those are really um, two two great pieces of advice. But you know, saving your money really comes down to looking at where it's going using zero-based budgeting to look at each expense area and ask, is this necessary? Um, and is it possible that I could get the same outcome for less cost, right? And, you know, flooring, for example, a lot of us are running carpet. Um, and nowadays, a lot, some exhibitors now are using the real lightweight foam snapped together um, flooring, which they end up having a more comfortable flooring. And the purchase cost of just one show using it you know, depending on how many shows a year you're doing, it may pay for itself from one show. Another area um, keep your eyes open for is when the show offers any form of marketing packages or bundles, 
there's often big time savings in those. So, and there's a million things. We could probably do a whole webinar on this topic. It's not the primary focus for today, but keep strict accounts, know where it's going, save money where you can. And before you decide to go this way or that way, like Stephanie mentioned, do a little recon to make sure that it's really a saving so you don't get caught on the back end. Remember I said earlier where the dollar goes? So this is the latest research, 2017, on how the exhibit dollar is spent. And you'll see that it really breaks the, the exhibit down where the dollar goes in space, the exhibit, transportation, show services, travel and entertainment, that includes your staff, air, hotel, ground, transportation, meals, advertising, promotion, lead gathering, fulfillment, and exhibit staff training being the nine major areas. So there are three areas within this spend that I would call them the leverage points. Number one is the look and the feel and the effectiveness of your overall exhibit. Uh, don't be afraid to invest a little more there. Um, an exhibit that grabs attention, that quickly communicates what you do, that gives the attendee a reason to stop and enter, uh, that delivers an experience uh, that is worthy of the attendee's time. That would be one of the first places that I would look at investing more. Number two is what you do to drive traffic. You know, WebTech is a really large show, okay? Um, the competition for attendees' time is fierce. Um, the average exhibitor, according to this research, is allocating 14% of their budget to promoting. I would suggest if you can save money in another area, go a little higher in that area. Try to get in the mind on the agenda, right? And number three is your booth staff. You know, you might not have a great location or you might not have a great design, your booth, but I tell you what, if you have a excited, proactive staff who's looking and acting like they wanna be there, and knows how to really manage interactions, make all the difference in the world. So if there were three areas that I would look at, trying to save money maybe in these other areas, that I could free up money to invest more in these three areas, these would be the three leverage points on the staff. All right, so let's switch over now and let's move into critical success factors. I think we're all familiar with the Pareto Principle, also known as the 80-20 Rule. And it's interesting, I went through a course on that two years ago, a complete course on the 80-20 Rule, and it shows up everywhere in life. It's absolutely mind-blowing. But, but essentially what it says is that 80% of the value, or 80% of the results that we get in an activity come from 20% of the actions or the activities. So what I've been on the hunt on for the last 28 years as a consultant, trainer, and productivity expert is what are those top 20? And having pulled now about over 800 million in results, I think I identified the big five. Number one is defining your outcomes. Um, Clarity is power, right? Knowing your outcomes is power. And defining your outcomes means taking reasons for exhibiting, converting them to written goals in time. Like when the door closes on West Tech, 90, 180 days after the show, how are you going to know you succeeded? Once you define what success looks like out there, closing time, three months, six months, nine months down the line, and it's clear, it's crystal clear, you know what it is and it's compelling, right? Now you develop action plans, you essentially reverse engineer your outcomes. Um, as Stephen Covey in his uh, great book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People said, begin with the end in mind. Can't say it better than that, that's what we're talking about. Number two is selective attraction. WefTech is a big show. It's a big industry. It's going to be thousands and thousands of attendees. But here's the thing, not all those people are your ideal visitor. And so what you've got to figure out, who is your ideal visitor, number one? How much is enough? Number two, why should they come see you out of a thousand other exhibitors? And what are you going to do between now and showtime? When they walk onto that West Tech floor, you're in their mind, you're on their agenda. That's what we call selective attraction. And by the way, 
on the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center, we have a deep dive on all of these topics between webinars, articles, downloadable tools, planning exercises, it's all there. Number three, manage the visitor experience. The average interaction in a booth is three to seven minutes. Uh, and, and there are three elements of graphics, the messaging, the imagery, how easy it is to enter, the, how you're presenting, showing, telling your product or service story, and your booth staff. And you really got to make sure that you've thought through what the visitor will see, what they'll do, what they'll get by visiting your booth. And you think all this through in advance, right? Begin with the end in mind. Define your visit, your booth, your demonstration presentation, and your staff. And by the way, we're going to give you good hitters on all of this in this webinar, too. But again, there's a lot more on the SRC. Number four, if you're not signing contracts on the show floor and you ever hope to get a return on investment, you've got to understand that the real product of the show is lead management, right? It's what, what are you going to do with your leads? So you've got to identify what is, what isn't a lead, what information do you need to capture, developing a qualification process, meaning questions and flow, integrating it into a lead capture device, training your staff to guide the conversation with questions, getting the visitor to collaborate and commit to a next step, following up all the way through to conversion. And number five, measurement. There's an old saying, what gets measured gets done. There's another saying, it's hard to improve what you're not measuring. So each of us need to come up with a simple set of metrics, analytics, how well did you execute your exhibit? How, where did you get value from the investment of time and human and financial capital? And did you ultimately get a return on your investment? So here's the promise. If you address these five factors, you, you, you'll win at Left Tech. You'll win at every show you do. Here's the warning. Here's the warning. If you don't address one or any combination of these, you'll struggle. Stephanie, is my audio okay? Yeah, a little bit better now. Okay, thank you. I apologize. It's, uh, I, I was getting some pings that was going in and out. So those are the big five, all right? So let's get after it and let's keep rolling on here. They're all important, right? But if there were one thing, what I would call the master key that virtually guarantees a successful exhibit is that you are in the mind and you are on the agenda of enough of the right people before the show opens. That's how a small exhibitor can win the game before kickoff. Get in the mind, get on the agenda of enough of the right people. So grab your pen. Let's figure out right now how much is enough for you. And then we're going to talk about who are the right people and give you some guidance then on how to get up on their agenda. So we're going to use a formula here that I've been using for about 25 years now. It's going to help you calculate your exhibit interaction capacity and what I call your PSO, your potential sales opportunity. So let's do this together right now. WefTech has 25 exhibiting hours. We're going to call that your opportunity. We're going to call that what you're really buying. Question. How many people, booth staff, are you going to have in your booth on average for those 25 hours? Rule of thumb, look at the bottom of the screen, 50 square feet per staffer. So if you're in a 10 by 10 booth, you got space for two, maybe three staffers. Don't overstaff it. Don't understaff it. Don't put one in there, right? Because if you're tied up talking to someone, what are you going to do with the other visitor that walks in? You're not going to be able to do anything, right? So make sure your staffing level is appropriate. Listen carefully to this one. I want you to set a firm target number of interactions per hour. The range as a starting point is three to five. Three is conservative. Four is moderate. Five is maybe aggressive. 
So this means that for each hour in the booth, your booth staff is on task to action with three, four, or five visitors per hour. Now, you could get more than that, right? It's possible, but don't start from your planning, right? Right in the pocket. Now, in this example, I have the capacity for 150 interactions. For me to win the West Tech exhibiting game, all I got to do is get in the mind and on the agenda of 150 of the best attendees for me. If I do that, if I can walk into the show with that capacity spoken for, I've won the game before kickoff. Anything that falls in out of the aisles, it's like the icing on the cake, right? Now, let's keep working this formula through. Some percentage of those visitors are going to convert to an opportunity or a lead. The CEIR benchmark is one out of four. Center for Exhibition Industry Research, one out of four visitors on average convert to an opportunity or a lead. Now, I can set a very clear and firm lead goal. By closing time, I will have... All right, we're definitely now, losing you on the audio again. So <laughs> try to see what's going on there. All right, I'm going to use a handheld. Does that sound better? Yes, definitely. Okay. So now 150 interactions, one out of four convert to an opportunity or a lead. Now, some percentage of those opportunity or leads are going to convert to business, okay? According to the CEIR research on exhibitor ROI practices, one out of five convert. So you can use that as a benchmark, 20%. In this example, that would be eight, right? Either orders or customers or clients, okay? Now, to finalize this, talk to your accounting department and ask them one or two questions. What is the average sale amount for our company? And or what is the value of a single client to our company? In my example, I'm going to use $25,000. I don't know what yours is. Maybe higher, maybe lower. Now you have your potential sales off. In this example, $200,000. So if you were using... Let's say your floor space is around $4,000 and you were using the floor space times five rule because we want to invest a little more to do this right. You would have invested $20,000 into the show. And if you could pull $200,000 in sales revenue six months, nine months down the line, would you have won the exhibiting game? The answer would be yes, all the way to the bank that would be a 10 to one top line revenue return on investment. $1 in, pull $10 back for your company. Now, if you change any of the variables in this formula, the bottom line number will change. But this is what I call exhibiting by the numbers. This is what I call like really reverse engineering your outcomes. Because now the target's clear. Attract 150 people, convert 38 to a lead convert eight to an order or a client, right? And now I have what? Outcomes and goals, right? Now all I got to do is execute around that. And these numbers, by the way, are amazingly accurate, provided the numbers you put in are accurate. Okay, now check this out. Left Tech is expecting over 12,000 water professionals at the show. You're a small exhibitor. You're in 10 by 10, 10 by 20. For you to win the game, you don't have to worry about 12,000 right? You just got to worry about 150. Doesn't that make your life a lot easier? It really does, right? Now the game is not so hard to win. It's pretty easy to win when you exhibit by the numbers. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot at you and some questions are going to come out. So at any moment, go to your tab that says questions, type your question and press send. Okay. Now we have answered so far, right? You know, the five critical success factors, how much is enough, uh, we're going to work now on who are the right people and how do you get them to your mood. So Stephanie's going to come back and kind of take us inside of the attendee demographic process and show you how you can get in front of the right people. Back to you, Stephanie.
Okay, no problem. And I think we're running a little bit behind on time. So I'm going to go through yes. this as quickly as I can so that we can move on to some of the re other slides. So this is actually um, kind of a snapshot of what you get in the downloadable registration list. This is a tool that WEF offers to all exhibitors as a benefit. And this can be downloaded at any time through the Experient Registration Portal. So this is, this is the pre-conference list of registrants. This list includes the attendees' key, key demographics, such as on this slide, the focus areas. This is only some of the available focus areas, but you'll see that you get all selections in one field, and then you also get fields that you can sort and filter on. So for instance, if you only want um, a person who has a focus area of collection systems and drinking water, or only collection systems, you can sort just on that field. And just to kind of connect the dots, these focus areas are what these registrants are at West Tech to either learn about or discuss. So this is really the way to connect the dots between what they want to talk about and what you are actually exhibiting. So in addition to focus areas, we also provide information on the registration type. Whoa, is that me or is that somebody else? Um, so on that registration type, we have expo only, and these are people who registered just to visit the exhibit. That's all they are there for. We have registrants who are full conference, so you're going to have to fight a little bit harder to get their attention to be on the, exhibit, on the exhibit floor. They're there to attend sessions and to attend the exhibition. And you'll also get information on the type of organization that they work for, if they are in manufacturing, if they are in banking, if they are in a public-private drinking water municipality, so on and so forth. We also have a category for other, and that is a free-form field. So if they select other, they can then put any other type of organization that they want. And this is just kind of a small sample of what that other can be. In addition to organization, we also collect their job, and that's their job type. So on top of organization, we have, are they an educator? Are they a manager? Are they a department head? Are they a student? And again, in this field, we also have an other selection that is free form, which might, in some cases, duplicate something that we already have. So here we have a, a option of banking, finance, and people will also select banking. Um, so it's worthwhile taking a look at that other and making decisions on your own of is there other really another or is it something that fits into the existing job. And those three things can really help you narrow down what a particular attendee is there to see and whether or not they are a very good target audience for you. All right, uh, th thanks, Stephanie. So this is a great tool, this list. You, you can acquire the pre-registered attendee mailing list, and then you can sort it down by these different selects to help you really laser focus in on who your audience is. So I'm, I'm gonna jump forward now and go to the um, how to really find your voice, find your value proposition. You're going to have to give these people a reason why to come see you. You know, remember, that there's a lot of competition. So the three biggest hooks for grabbing attention of trade show attendees are new. If you have something new, it's a magnet. Number two is problematic. Uh, if you can step back and think about the problems they are likely experiencing that you can help them solve, all you got to do is dangle the problems and learning. They come to the show to learn. If you can integrate any of those three into your messaging, it'll cut through the noise and it'll grab the attention. The major question I think each of us need to ask is relative to your company, your products, your services, what situations might be happening in the plant or the operation that would prompt them to think about what you do? What problems are they facing? What challenges? What projects might they be planning or you know working on and what opportunities do you create for them 
Again, think less about your product services and more about the end result that people are buying. Once you find these situations, you can integrate them into your pre-show marketing to cut through the noise and grab the attention of your audience. Here's what the value proposition looks like in action, okay? And you can take your hook either from the problem and or the opportunity approach. Tired of this, worried about that, struggling with this. Or interested in this, curious about this, wanna learn more about this. Fill in the blanks. Give us five minutes. You'll see, you'll do, you'll learn. And oh, by the way, we've got something cool for you waiting at the booth. And that's really the value proposition. Once you get it then, all you gotta do is communicate bits and pieces of it, and sometimes in totality, through as many channels as you can, and you'll get in their mind and on their agenda. So with that, one of the most important things you gotta do, Stephanie, you wanna talk quickly about the exhibitor listing and what they need to know about the listing. Definitely. Um, the main thing to know about the exhibitor listing really follows up on what Jefferson was just talking about, and a strong listing, as he mentioned, is talks about that value proposition and includes specifics about the product or service that you have and how it solves problems or provides results. Our early data app, our early mobile app usage shows that registrants will um, favorite those kinds of uh, those kinds of directory listings so that they can go back and visit those exhibitors later. And if we want to go, yeah, to the next slide, in order to do that, you want to go ahead and submit that directory listing form. It's right there in the exhibitor toolkit. Um, that gives you the option of getting your long description in for the mobile app, and well, as well as submitting five PDFs to give attendees additional information about your product, your service, and your company. And if there is one thing that we want to say, make sure you are listed under at least one category for the filters. Those are the ones that you see along the left, chemicals, conveyance systems, et cetera, et cetera. That will make sure that if somebody is not looking for you under keyword, under the search, that you will pop up under those filters. All right, thanks, Stephanie. Hey, yeah, so, so be sure to invest a little bit of time of really thinking through your value proposition. Um, and then writing your exhibitor description and listing in a very thoughtful manner and, and making sure that you're listed under the right categories. That is one of the key ways that WebTech attendees determine which booths they're gonna visit. So uh, make sure you um, take care of this. All right, let's keep rolling in the sake of time. Uh, the other thing you're gonna wanna do is work your house list. The CPS triangle starts with your customers. You never want to go in a big show like WestTech without touching your customers. Whether you think they're coming or not, the competition will be knocking on the door loud. Uh, you can see four different reasons here for engaging your customers. Quick cash flow is prospects who are already in your sales pipeline using the show to move them one step closer. And the third side of the triangle is your suspects or your profile matches like we just talked about. To activate this idea, one of the best things you can do is have your sales dealer distributors submit and build a list with X number of names of each type, set a clear outcome for each name, touch them three times before the show. Seems to work best if you use multiple media. What you're angling for is either a confirmed appointment or a verbal commitment. The appointment is the hardest thing to get. If there's enough value there, you can get it, but it just takes a lot more legwork. The verbal commitment, the person says, yes, I'm going to West Tech. Yes, I'm coming by your booth. To kick this off, put a contest in play. Get your sales team, your dealer, your distributors competing to see who can get the most of their CPS list to the show and to your booth. There are some free marketing ops available that you really got to uh, leverage. We just talked about your company listing and profile uh, for the mobile app. The deadline is late July. Please do not miss that. Make sure you... Take full advantage of categories and keywords. The logos and graphics are available for free. We talked about the, the pre-registered and the Hold previous on. year. Uh, <laughs> yes. Hold on. The VIP guest invites graphics are free. Um, the logos in the directory and the mobile app are not free. Just a quick 
clarification on that. Um, the, the list, take advantage of the networking opportunities. Hey, don't just, I mean, even though I want you to win the game from your booth, be where the attendees are. The hospitality hour, mixing with members in the huddle room, press kit, PR, drop it off in the press room, or you can submit it online and you can get a list in August and get involved in all of West Tech's social media channels, Facebook, use in all of your promotions um, and get involved in all three of their channels. With that, uh, Stephanie, give us a very quick overview on this guest invite program. Yep. So we're working with VIP guest invites again. They are a WEF official vendor and a WEF tech official vendor. They provide a code, an evite code. That evite code gives um, your customers, your clients, a free expo only registration. Um, and WEF tech 2018 exhibitors who used VIP guest invites had between 5% and 15% more aisle traffic and up to 50% more scanned leads than other booths of a comparable size. So when you get an invitation, which will look just like this one, it will have a link to your custom portal, which will look like the next one. And this is your custom portal. You use the links on the top, or you can just go ahead and scroll through to access things like a custom HTML page that you can go ahead and grab one more. Um, so that you've got custom banner graphics that you can download. You have a custom HTML email that you can literally copy and paste into any email service that you want. And it's basically this simple. The logo is already in all of these graphics for you. If it's not absolutely perfect, you can just replace it. And if you need any help, help is available directly on the site itself. Yeah, this is a really powerful resource, super easy to use. As you'll notice, it really integrates a uh, unique promotional code and reg link, email, web invite, banner graphics, social media sharing. Doesn't get any easier than this. Everybody, please use this service. It's state of the art, simple and easy to use. And you can't say it better what Stephanie just said. Exhibitors who used this last year experienced 50% higher lead count than those who didn't. So use it. All right, so uh, we are running a few minutes behind. Uh, I hope you'll hang with me. I'm going to power through this. This is all great content, and I'll have you out of here in maybe six or seven minutes. So here we go. Now, you got to make sure your booth works, right? So number one, it's got to be seen. Number two, it's got to quickly and visually give people what you do and why they should stop. It's got to be approachable, easy to enter and navigate. And there's got to be something to do in the booth, brief, not long, but it's got to be meaningful and engaging, right? And they got to walk out of there knowing something they didn't know when they walked in. So the fastest ways to make sure your exhibit gets seen is light it up, right? People are like bugs. They're attracted to lights. Number two, imagery, large, colorful imagery. Number three, clear, concise, informative messaging. Uh, number four, creatively using whether it's flat panels, tablets, LED walls, video screens, whatever. AV, and again, something to do and a proactive booth staff. Presentation demonstrations. The number one way attendees want to interact with an exhibit is through an interactive presentation demonstration. It'll increase your lead, number of leads. It'll help improve awareness. And 51% of attendees at a show say a physical product demonstration or presentation is what impacted their recall of your exhibit. So think through your presentation carefully. I believe we have a complete webinar up on the ESRC that'll walk you through how to do that. Okay, some ideas, hands-on product demos, interactive AV presentations, small educational theaters, even in a small booth, and be sure to visually support whatever you want them to know about your products and signage. Here we go. The Dyson Airblade booth. What are you doing here? They're saying it's the fastest, cleanest hand dryer. What do they got right on the edge of the booth? A running demo with a sink bowl. Get your hand wet, woof, put it in there, hands dry. You got it. Here's a small booth, a, a 10 by 20 booth with a small theater right on the edge. Flat panel, five seats. So some of us think small booths, we can't do this. We can. 
when you use AV, make sure to have some form of a signage or something letting people know what to do with it. We see a lot of AV in booths and people have no idea what they're supposed to do with it. And here's a great example, and this is actually from West Tech, of a company with physical product that puts text bubbles right on the product to educate the exhibitor about what and why. The next generation in sludge grinders, reduction in biosolids, reduction in very well done, but very important to do that. Don't just talk at them at the show. It'll go in one ear and out the other. Make sure they hear it, they see it, they do it. Talk about your uh, some of the strategies. Proving your claims, demonstrate what makes you different, recreating scenarios, letting them touch, tinker, push buttons, do things. Before and afters are a really powerful strategy. Old way, new way, great strategy. Here's the old way to do it, here's the new way, right? Challenging their skill, making them guess using interactive touch screens, uh, 60 second challenges. And the, more, the longer the demo, the more you wanna provide comfortable space and place for them to hang. But again, you, you're not gonna want your demos to go much more than seven minutes. It's about all you've got for your demonstration presentation. Talk about your staff for a minute here as we wind down. Um, number one, best people forward. Don't just send the guy because he happens to be closest in, or gal who closest to the center. It's gotta be the right people that are excited to be there, know how to work a show, Make them accountable. Remember your goal you said earlier? Make your booth staff accountable for X number of interactions and X number of leads. Uh, teach them how to proactively engage visitors. When they walk up to the booth, greet them. Welcome them. Introduce yourself. Ask a discovery question. When they're in the aisle, don't pounce on them. Just stand up, open body posture, put a smile on your face, and look into the aisles. Right? This will keep your booth busy pretty much the whole show. You've got to know how to get out of conversations, too. I see so many times when staff gets in there and they spend 20, 25, 30 minutes with a customer who really has no future plans on buying anything, but it's comfortable so they stay. The fastest way to end the interaction is, hey, I've really enjoyed talking with you, and take a step back. This is where your promotional products can come into play. You can give them something. What I like to do is find a booth around me that has something going on, and when I'm ready to end the conversation, um, I'll direct them, hey, have you seen what's going on over here? Go check this out. Man, I've really enjoyed talking with you, right? Make sure that your good staff asks more questions than they talk, right? Easy questions. What brings you to the show? What brings you to the booth? How are you familiar with our company products? What are you doing in this area? What challenges are you facing, right? Be sure to use their name, right? When you talk to them and don't read it off the badge, if you meet them earlier, you'll get it. When you start talking product, less is more. The smartest thing you can do is ask someone, how are you familiar with our solution? Uh, what do you know? Uh, what would you like to learn? When you do start talking product, make sure that you're not just dumping product features on them, but you're linking it up to a benefit and advantage of a payoff, one message at a time. Don't cluster three, four, five good messages together. Keep it brief. Leads, let's talk leads, okay? Again, if you're not writing orders at the show, this is the real takeaway. So let's make sure your staff knows what is a lead. It's not just scanning anybody, like the picture here. It's not just a business card in a fishbowl. It's information rich, and there's a clear next action. Key big idea here, please make note of this. You may never have this chance again when you're standing with this visitor. Get more information than just what's embedded in the badge. Ask yourself, what do we need to learn and capture? Come up with a qualifying process. Capture good notes. Take good notes. Take a hard look at your capture device. I strongly encourage it costs a little more. It's a mistake if a person walks up and hands you their badge to scan and you cannot scan it. That's a big mistake early in the relationship. Try not to do that. Use custom qualifiers in the device to deserve. Capture the best information. Follow up, get it together before the show. Don't wait. The biggest thing, mistake you can wait, leads and ask yourself, what am I gonna do with these leads? Yes. We lost the biggest mistake. We didn't hear it. The, I'm, I'm sorry, what was that, Stephanie? I said we didn't hear it. We didn't hear the biggest mistake. 
Oh, when it comes to leads, yeah, just like scanning them, just just scanning everybody that gets near your booth. I mean, we're on the show floor doing exhibit evaluations, wearing black apparel with an iPad. Exhibitors run up and say, can I scan your badge? They scan it. They run away, and they they'll tell their boss they got a lead. Don't just scan everybody that's living and breathing, right? So spend that time to really, like, qualify them. Make sure that it's real. Uh, salespeople don't value trade show leads primarily because we're not doing a good job of getting quality leads. Okay, so make sure you get quality. And one of the keys to quality is collaborating with the visitor on what happens next and getting them to commit, asking them, what do you think our next step should be? When would you like that to happen? Who besides yourself might also need to be part of this, right? And, and just saying, hey, I'll send you the information and our Next step is going to be the call to do a site visit. Does that, does that sound reasonable? Yes. Approximately, you know, when are we talking? Next month? When, right? So really get with them. Follow up fast, right? Whatever information they requested, get it to them fast. Don't let a lot of time. And today with electronic lead capture, you have the ability to follow up often right on the spot. I like to take, ask my booth staff to take my top five interactions of the day before they leave the booth, we do a handwritten thank you note in the booth, and we drop them in the mail that evening. It takes five or ten minutes to do. It'll make you stand out from the crowd. LinkedIn, be sure to connect with them on LinkedIn, review their profile, and join the groups they're part of, and use LinkedIn in mail. One out of four LinkedIn in mails get opened and responded to. Three out of 100 B2B emails get opened and responded to. I like one out of four better than three out of 100. Finally, stay in touch over time. If you know that th this is a fit, just commit to following up and don't always be selling on every contact. Find ways to inform, to educate, to share knowledge, to share information, to improve their operation, improve their life. Okay, we run a few minutes over. I apologize. Uh, we jammed out a lot of content. It looks like everyone has stayed on all the way. So thank you very much for that. Uh, with that, Stephanie, I'm going to take a look in the question queue. Is there anything on your end you'd like to kind of add or share as we begin to wind down here? I would like to get straight to the Q&A and see what we've got. Here we go. Um, question one is, is there a, a link to how do they access the, um, the attendee mailing list? We will send that out post-show. It's in the um, it's in the registration link. Okay, the registration link. So if some somebody wants to acquire the pre-show targeted list, how would they get that? So for the targeted list, everybody has to define their own targeted list. You get the entire pre-show registration when you download it, and then it's up to you to go ahead and go make filter it to your own needs. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question: Are the VIP invites is that live? Is that available now? It is. You would have received the email from support at vipguestinvites.com. If you have not received that, you can contact us and we can look up your portal information for you. Okay, and the next question is on VIP invites. Is there some limit? How many uh, VIP invites can they send? Is there a limit? My favorite question, no. Unlimited. And what's the cost to use VIP invites? And that's my other favorite question. There is no cost to the exhibitors for using it's, VIP guest invites. It is a complimentary benefit for WebTech exhibitors. Wow, it's it's free. That's 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 pretty amazing. That's a really powerful marketing tool for every exhibitor. So, I know we've covered a lot of ground here today. A lot of you are probably swimming right now and going, "Wow, that was a lot of content." Remember this that uh, we have recorded the session. We will be uploading it for unlimited replay view, one. Two is you do have the workbook. Hopefully you've downloaded it and gone through it. The, the best advice that I can give you as of today is to start planning now, right? Define your audience, define your solutions, define your goals. Get started right now on your marketing and designing your exhibit experience. As you get closer to the show, really zero in on lead management and your staff. Make sure your staff is ready, that you viewed the webinars, that they're ready to come in and perform, and make sure that your lead capture, qualification, and follow-up process is best it can be. 
And if you'll do the things we've talked about in this webinar, you will be on your way to a highly successful Weft Tech exhibit. So I want to thank everyone for logging in, spending time, and hanging with us, you know, a few minutes past the buzzer here. Uh, covered a lot of ground. Stephanie, any final comments from Weft Tech? Thank you, Jefferson. Thank, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and staying until the very end. And we will have this up online no later than Friday. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for logging in. Um, the real work begins now. It's not what you heard. It's going to be what you do. Take action. Use what you learned. We will see you at WebTech. We'll see you online at the Exhibitor Success Center. And uh, go get them. Have a great show. And that's what this is all about. So thanks for logging in, everybody.